I'm David Droz, and we're here with Urban Green Energy at the Consumer Electronics Show here in Las Vegas. Um, to show not only our small wind systems, this behind me is the Eddy 600 watt turbine, but also to debut uh, View UGE, which is the first um, fully integrated wind monitoring system, also capable of uh, monitoring hybrid solutions. So, um, as a whole, Urban Green Energy is not only the manufacturer of vertical axis wind turbines, um, but we're really also trying to distinguish ourselves as a leader in the entire distributed energy realm. This is full scale energy solutions at a distributed level. What we've done is take that generator and that wind energy and actually bring it down to size. So we have three turbines, the 600 watt, which is the Eddy behind me. We have the one kilowatt, the Eddy GT, and the UGE 4K, which is really designed to offset the entire energy use of a home over a year. Um, so just to run through some quick numbers, if we were looking at, you know, uh, wind sight of about five meters per second average wind speed, we'd be generating about 8,000 kilowatt hours annually, and which is enough to offset, you know, a typical small home. Um, and then it, the entire solution scalable. So you go up from there, you can install multiple turbines, and the entire system is either able to be uh, used in battery backup configuration where you're charging batteries or you can connect directly to the grid and this is where we're able to really take advantage of other incentives um, such as uh, net metering where you're actually selling your energy back to the grid and offsetting your usage that way so um, we're excited about a lot of other products at the show as I mentioned on the introduction View UGE is the first um, fully integrated solution for hybrid systems. It tracks in real time both wind and any solar input. Um, you can have you know, multiple inputs, so multiple turbines, multiple solar panels, all with their individual uh, MAC addresses that you know, are hardwired to the network. So you can, from anywhere, see exactly what you're producing, exactly what you're consuming, um, the whole full history of the turbine along multiple sites for users that you know have multiple turbines. And uh, and this is again really a first for wind. Uh, not to mention remote remote uh, control, like remote shutdown. So um, these are these are just some things we're really excited about. Our partnership with General Electric. Um, on their watt station, um, that's their EV charging station, and, and what we've done is actually partner with them to offer a complete solution for wind-powered electric vehicle charging. So we're talking about the ability to pull into a parking space with your electric vehicle, um, you know, take this sky pump, which is we call it the Sanya sky pump, you know, plug it into your vehicle, and all of that energy is being offset by wind power. And so this is, you know, a complete, essentially a net zero way of charging your electric vehicle using, you know, the vertical axis wind technology. We're also um, really pushing hard into things like telecoms markets where, you know, mobile network operators are really in need of a reliable system for power that, you know, is running 24-7 and diesel generators are really the primary source of, of energy for these towers. Um, and it's unsustainable. Diesel is extremely expensive. Um, the generators are uh, constantly requiring maintenance. There's problems with all sorts of things from parts repair to, to theft of fuel and, and parts and, and generators themselves. So being able to offer hybrid solutions where you have wind and solar, um, you know, maybe fuel cells, maybe generators as well, all working together. This is where you can really bring that percentage offset up and save so much money over the long term, and even over the short term. The startup is wind speed of three and a half meters per second is relatively low. So even in quiet conditions, you can still be generating power. Um, the power curve, which you know is fully certified, goes from that cut-in wind speed of about three and a half meters per second up to about 12 meters per second or uh, 25 miles an hour approximately. 
where you know you're generating power across that entire curve. So when you talk about cost of these systems, uh, it's really important to keep in mind um, not only the return on investment, but ultimately you know what you're saving, what you're getting back. So the system behind me here, the hardware is about $3,800, um, and then the electronics are about another $800. So you know you're looking at roughly $5,000 for the complete system, the turbine and the electronics. Uh, installation usually costs about two to three thousand dollars, depending on the size of the foundation and the height of the tower. Um, roof mounts are possible, and uh, you know at that stage, one of our partners would come in and actually do an evaluation to find out what kind of reinforcements would be needed for the home or the or the building. You know, if it's a warehouse, for example, a lot of concrete roofs are, are very easy to retrofit for uh, short towers. Um, or you get the height, and it's really cost effective because, you know, even taking advantage of like the edges of buildings or the corners of buildings where um, you have sort of micro environments that really add to higher wind resource and higher ROI. Um, one of the things about any installation is you really want to make sure that you understand that wind resource and siting is critical. So another one of our products is the UG First Step and it's actually an anemometer right out of the box. You can see it over here. So. Um, you know, we'd encourage not only to use the resources available, like um, NASA has a great atmospheric tool that you can see historic wind data for your area, um, but actually getting up, installing an anemometer and recording that wind data is you know, a fail-safe way of actually understanding what your, wind re what, your, what, your wind, what your wind resource is and then how that correlates to annual production based on you know, what turbine you have installed. So uh, another thing that contributes to ROI is sorry, cost of energy. A lot of the markets that we're pushing into uh, have a very high cost of energy. So it's in these cases where you know, someone is paying 25, 30 cents per kilowatt hour um, and you're generating 10,000 kilowatt hours a year with a 4K turbine, um, you know, ROI drops to less than 10 years. Um, plus, in, that's not including any incentives. And incentives are still a big part of you know, what makes these turbines financially viable, especially in the domestic market, um, where the federal incentives are available, also state incentives, you know, where applicable. Um, so it's, it's really about finding what's the best solution, how to site it properly, considering your wind resource, and then ultimately um, monitoring and maintaining that solution over the course of the 20 year life of the turbine. What about local restrictions? The issues revolve around noise and wildlife protection when you are talking about installing in residential communities. Um, the turbine behind me here, one of our core technologies is the dual axis design. Essentially the entire turbine rests on two independent bearing sets. So it really reduces the moment force. So there's also the twisted blades reduce the oscillating loads on the turbine. Um, and what you end up with is a system with very low vibration and that leads to less wear and tear on the, on the system and ultimately less noise for uh, you know, a very robust system. Um, as far as wildlife is concerned, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about um, birds and bats and bees essentially. The vertical axis configuration spins, is designed really to operate in a very low RPM regime. So, well, you know, the rated RPM for the turbine behind me is about 200 RPM. This is well below the sort of 300, 400 RPM range of a lot of the small horizontal axis turbines that when they're spinning, essentially are just a blurry disc um, that are often treacherous for birds and wildlife, um, as opposed to a vertical axis configuration where one blade passing behind another really helps um, elucidate the entire object as three-dimensional and, and you know, where each blade is visible to the wildlife. So you know, we've got a couple videos, in fact, one of my favorites is there's this flock of birds that sort of comes up, flies around the turbine, so almost like they're playing with it, and then sort of nestles in this tree nearby and uh, you know, while the turbine's spinning. So and I, it's really about when it comes down to it, public education. And if there's a precedence, whether it's for zoning variances or um, permitting with a housing commission, what you're really looking for is to help people understand that these turbines really do produce, they really do 
um, make a difference in you know your energy bills and the bottom line, and they really are not disruptive to a community environment, either from a noise or a site perspective. So uh, you know, some people think it's even pretty. I don't know if you ask me. It, it's it's a uh, it's it's a beautiful addition. So um, uh, there's there's a, there's certainly a, a lot of uh, a lot of room to grow within the market, both residential and commercial. And uh, you know, we're looking forward to meeting people here at the show, and we're excited to be here at CES in Las Vegas.